Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So researchers in Spain have found out that a small amount of beer every day can have beneficial health effects. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what this new research out of Spain with regard to beer drinking has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read by Chrissy Gasborough where she covers how researchers in Spain examined studies into beer that spanned 13 years, in which they identified a few key benefits that beer may have on your long-term health. There are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Chrissy is keen to set out at the start that the study does not promote heavy drinking or even drinking alcohol all the time. In this meta-analysis, which was recently published in the international peer-reviewed journal Nutrients, a team of nutrition and food science researchers from Spain examined studies from 2007 to 2020 that all considered the effects of mostly alcoholic beverages on people's health. However, some of the studies suggested that the naturally occurring nutrients in the beer and not the alcohol itself were what delivered some of the key health benefits. Now, since the choice of non-alcoholic beers has never been more abundant, parts of this study also mean good news for beer drinkers who abstain from alcoholic beer. An important factor was that the researchers who conducted this meta-analysis found that moderate beer consumption was essential to experiencing all the health benefits that beer can bring. They suggest one drink per day for women and no more than two drinks per day for men. Let's take a look at cardiovascular disease. The researchers state that five of the six studies they selected for review identified a protective effect of moderate alcohol drinking on cardiovascular disease. This was true for individuals who regularly drank up to 13.5 ounces of beer per week when compared to abstainers and to occasional drinkers. The researchers also stated men abstainers have a significantly higher risk of developing abnormal glucose regulation than occasional beer drinkers, suggesting occasional beer consumption may be protective against diabetes in men. Moving on, let's take a look at bone health. When looking at bone density and the risk of fracture among older individuals, the researchers stated very low levels of consumption were associated with a decreased risk of fracture. For this variable, they suggest that the non-alcoholic components of beer may also be involved. They explained that other compounds present in beer, such as phytoestrogens, act synergistically with silicone to stimulate osteoblast cells, which improve bone structure and help with natural bone and tooth repair. Poor bone health can lead to a reduction in exercise, and a reduction in exercise can lead to sarcopenia. I think bone health is a key aspect in this report. As we know, there are 27,000 deaths a year in the USA from sarcopenia-related accidents. The chances of dying within the first three months following a fall are five times more likely for women and eight times more likely for men. Anything we can do to prevent conditions such as osteoporosis will have a positive effect on our longevity. Let's now take a look at beer consumption and cholesterol. The researchers also highlight several studies which suggest that beer helps promote what they call good cholesterol, HDL, and helps regulate the body's processing of bad cholesterol, LDL and VLDL, thanks in large part to the antioxidants found in a well-brewed beer. It's important to note that this was found when a very small amount of beer was consumed, between half an ounce and one ounce per day. That's less than the average shot glass, but they didn't conclude you lose all of the benefits if you consume a little more beer. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I think it's important to stress 
that in all of the studies that I've seen to do with alcohol consumption and health, that moderation is a key factor. Uh, I know some people were quite shocked in a recent video that I released where David um, Sinclair explained that he does drink every night. That said, he says that he only drinks either one glass of wine or one glass of whiskey a night, so well within the government parameters of one or two drinks per night. Also, all of the studies that I've looked at, uh, including um, comments made by the author of the book, The Blue Zone Diet, have stressed that those people that do drink in moderation tend to live longer and healthier lives than those who abstain. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.